Hi, I'm Tony Jones. Here's a bonus question we couldn't fit on q and It's from Chris Dobbs. Oh. Hi, Tony. <laughs> or I didn't expect that. Um, uh, my question is, I've heard a lot of debate from both sides of the, the table, and I just find that I'm a millennial and, and the left and the right sides don't really um, sort of do it for me anymore. So my question is, why should I care about all of this at all? Um, the political system is broken to me and needs to change. I believe technology provides the answer. In the future, we will all vote for policy online. How will you all adjust to this? Um, short answers, Yasmin. Well, I'm so thrilled that you raised that question because I think that um, youth disengagement in politics is a humongous issue. So um, my work in Youth Congress was working, uh, representing 1.2 million young people and a team of 20 young youth advising on youth policy. So I think a real part of that disengagement is because young people aren't included in the conversation because politicians are creating policies without consulting young people. So I think that's a humongous part. Um, in regards to reforming the political system, absolutely, I think that it's really outdated. I mean, there's even been suggestions like for question time that people can submit questions online, you know, and, and we can reform yeah, so it. So we do it. that here every Monday. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Maybe there's, there's still your idea. But at the end yeah. of the day, um, I think absolutely politicians should be actively engaging with young people. I'd really encourage you to, to, to find about what you're interested in. There's so many youth-led NGOs and organisations where you can make your voice heard to politicians, and I assure you it really does count, it really does make a difference. Tom, are we losing the millennials, that is, the traditional politicians? Well, I don't know, but the Centre for Independent Studies, a think tank that I work for and head, we commissioned some polling not so long ago among millennials in this country. So these are folks born between 1982 and 1998. And the broad cross-section of millennials in this country, and this reflects trends in Britain and America, are overwhelmingly left-leaning. They have a benign view of socialism. They take a hostile view towards capitalism. Now, to the extent that those trends continue, that'll have huge implications for the body politic. I imagine Doug Cameron's just sort of going, yippee. <laughs> <laughs> um, well... Socialism coming ha, ha, back ha, into vogue, Doug. Yep. Yeah. You know, the, the socialist agenda is there. Um, so, look, in, in relation to Victoria, look at Victoria. Go back to where we started. You know, when you're actually dealing with the issues for millennials, when you're actually dealing with housing, when you're dealing with, you know, the gig economy and casualisation and wage stagnation... These are issues, regardless of how you vote, are fundamental to young people for the future. And the overriding one is, is the uh, environment. Unless we deal with the environment, then we're going to really have nothing left to actually worry about. Any room for shop stewards in the gig economy? Well, I hope... <laughs> no, no, because shop stewards would stop that nonsense. <laughs> OK, Can Maureen. I, yes, the political system is completely broken when voices like people of people like yours is being locked out. And mo most people are feeling that that's the case in the moment, where political parties are stuck in their, either their internal battles and they're really not giving an ear to what people are saying. But I don't think that millennials are disengaged from politics. This amazing action is happening on the 30th of this month, where school students are striking for action on climate change. So I think there will be different ways of how people engage in politics, and I think we should definitely be open to changing the political system and finding much better ways where everyone can participate, not, not the elite or not those big corporations who pay donations to the big party? I'd also like to add as well, young people, um, uh, even though they might be more left-leaning, there's plenty of conservative young people that I've met as well. Shame. There's a whole diversity. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, recently, oh, I no. recently went to the Eric, Eric, so, Eric Socialism <laughs> always fails when it runs out of other people's money. <laughs> <laughs> all you've got to do, yeah. all you've got to do is look at Venezuela. Yeah. And what I would invite you to do, my chief of staff is the federal president of the Young Liberal Movement, and he's got some very good ideas and engaging more young people in what is a very growing movement. Let's not look at moment. China because there's only about a billion socialists there. Yeah. Um, we'll move on. That's with all we no have time choice. for. With no <laughs> with, choice. With absolutely no choice and one yeah, party. With no choice. And no, not the same sort of freedoms we have here. Yeah. That's all we have time for. Please thank our questioner, Chris Dobbs.